All right, so a couple examples of how to deal with these indeterminate powers. First off, we have the limit as x approaches infinity of e raised to the power of e to the negative x. I realize that as x goes to infinity, I can't exactly um, plug in infinity, but what I do know is that the base of this exponential will go to infinity, and e to the negative x tends towards zero. Therefore, we do have an indeterminate form of the form infinity raised to the zero power. So, following the process from the last video, we're going to assume that the limit exists, and we're going to give it a variable name. Variable I'm going to give it is y. After I have an equation now, I can apply a natural log to both sides of the equation and get the natural log of y is equal to the natural log of the limit as x goes to infinity of x raised to the e to the negative x power. Then I apply continuity to move the natural log to the inside of the limit. So this will be the limit as x goes to infinity of the natural log of x raised to the e to the negative x power. This is still equal to the natural log of y. So the reason that I took the natural log is so that I can take this power and move it down front. We'll say natural log of y is equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the negative x times the natural log of x. This is now an indeterminate product. Indeed, we notice that as we allow x to approach infinity, we're going to observe that e to the negative x approaches 0, and the natural log of x as x goes to infinity will be infinity. For the indeterminate product, you are supposed to force a fraction with this, and the way that we're going to force a fraction is going to be to move the e to the negative x into a denominator. Now, because the exponent was negative, we can simply move this down as e raised to the positive x power. At this point, if we were to once again attempt to use the direct substitution property, in quotation marks because we can't plug in infinity, natural log of x goes to infinity as x goes to infinity, e to the x goes to infinity as x goes to infinity, we are now good to use L'Hopital's rule. Applying L'Hopital's rule, we would have the limit as x goes to infinity of, numerator would become 1 over x, denominator would stay as e to the x. And if you allow x to go to infinity in this case, your numerator will go to 0. Your denominator will go to infinity. That is equal to 0. I'm not going to put this in a box, though, because this is not our final answer. Do keep in mind that this is what the natural log of y is equal to. So because the natural log of y is equal to 0, we can finish this off by saying that y would be e raised to the 0 power, which is equal to 1. That goes in a box. That is our final answer. So as it turns out, when you raise infinity to the 0 power, sometimes that can be 1 as well. For another example, we're going to try out the following. We're going to take the limit as x goes to infinity of x plus 1 over x minus 3 raised to the x minus 1 power. So first off, if we were to allow x to go to infinity, this quantity in here would become infinity over infinity, and one application of L'Hopital's rule would give us 1 over 1. That is 1. Your exponent is going to the infinity power, so that'll be 1 raised to the infinity power. So with that in mind, following the same process, y is equal to, we'll assume the limit exists, and we'll give it a name, x plus 1 over x minus 3 raised to the x minus 1 power. The reason that we want to get this equation is so we can take the natural log of both sides. So we get the natural log of the limit as x goes to infinity of x plus 1 over x minus 3 raised to the x minus 1 power. Next, we apply continuity, move the natural log to the inside of the limit, and the limit outside of the natural log. The limit as x goes to infinity of the natural log of, oh, the parentheses are about to get absolutely wild here. So this one closes the natural log, and this one closes the limit. Okay, good, good, good. The reason we have the natural log in here is so that we can take this power and bring it down as a coefficient in front of the natural log. More parentheses. This will now be x minus 1 times the natural log of x plus 1 over x minus 3. 
If you were to now allow x to go to infinity by using the direct substitution property, x minus 1 is now going to infinity. This is still going to 1, and the natural log of 1 would be 0. Therefore, we have an indeterminate product. We are going to force a fraction to turn it into an indeterminate quotient. Now, never move the natural log to the denominator of the denominator, because that's just going to wind up being too complicated. Instead, we'll move the x minus 1 into the de denominator as being 1 over x minus 1, or simply x minus 1 to the negative 1 power. In this form, your numerator is now 0, your denominator is now 0, so if we were to apply the direct substitution property, we would now arrive at 0 divided by 0, which means that we can now officially apply L'Hopital's rule. Now, there are a couple different ways that you can apply L'Hopital's rule in this case, because there are properties of logarithms, etc., that can be applied here. What I'm going to do is just go for it. So derivative of natural log is 1 over... Yo, dog, I heard you like fractions, so I put a fraction inside of a fraction inside of a fra fraction. Then the chain rule says multiply by the derivative of the inside. Derivative of the inside requires the quotient rule. Quotient rule says low d high less high d low over the square of what's below. In the denominator, we'll be differentiating x minus 1 to the negative 1 power. That'll be negative 1 times x minus 1 raised to the negative 2 power. So what I'm going to do at this point is a lot of algebra because this thing needs to be simplified a lot and be sure to write that limit as x goes to infinity right at the front just like I didn't. So algebraically what I'm going to do is limit x goes to infinity big fraction. 1 over something means the reciprocal of that. The reciprocal of x plus 1 over x minus 3 is going to be x minus 3 over x plus 1 times. Then I'm going to simplify this a bit Multiplying by 1 and multiplying by 1 isn't going to do a whole lot, but we do need to distribute that minus sign and call that minus x minus 1. Interpreting the denominator, this would be negative 1 over x minus 1 quantity squared. You'll notice that the denominator is a single fraction. I'm going to try to turn the numerator into a single fraction as well. So continuing with some algebra, this will be the limit as x goes to infinity of big fraction. We'll keep the x minus 3 over x plus 1 as is. Simplify this numerator, we get negative 4. Then we have all of that over x minus 3, quantity squared. Denominator is still negative 1 over x minus 1, quantity squared. In the numerator, I can take a factor of x minus 3 and a factor of x minus 3 and cancel those out. Then, your numerator is, for all intents and purposes, one single fraction. And that one single fraction is negative 4 over x plus 1 times x minus 3. And we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of what was in the denominator. So this will be negative x minus 1 quantity squared over 1. Running low on room, so we are going to repop it right up here. What I'm going to do is expand this denominator, cancel these negatives, and expand the numerator completely. So this will be limit as x approaches infinity of x minus 1 quantity squared. We expand that and then distribute a 4. I suppose we could do that as two steps. Expand the x minus 1 quantity squared. We'll have x squared minus 2x plus 1. Then expanding the x plus 1 times x minus 3, that'll be x squared minus 2x minus 3. You know what, instead of distributing the 4, I'll just point out that as x goes to infinity, this is still infinity over infinity. So I'm going to apply L'Hopital's rule. This will be the limit as x goes to infinity of derivative of the top, that'll be 4 times 2x minus 2. And then your denominator is also 2x minus 2. 
that can save us a step. Now we can cancel out the 2x minus 2s and get an answer of 4. You'll notice though that I am not putting that in a box as it is not our final answer. Let's follow all the way back and remind ourselves that this is equal to the natural log of y. So if the natural log of y is equal to 4, that lets us know that y is going to be equal to e raised to the fourth power. That goes in a box. That is our final answer. I'm going to go take a shower because I feel dirty after that problem.